Now, flying has long become routine for many people. But even frequent flyers sometimes don't know about things you should never do on a plane. Ooh. No bare feet on a plane. It's one of the biggest no-nos of air travel. Even if we omit the topic of unpleasant odors. Phew. The airplane floor is extremely filthy. People with contagious foot problems might have been walking the aisles barefoot before you. There's likely to be a lot of dirt left after previous passengers. And don't even get me started on the floor in the laboratories. Ew. If your feet need some freedom, take off your shoes, but at least wear your socks. Or bring along a pair of light slippers. Keep in mind that the pressurized air in the passenger cabin is just as dry as it is in the Sahara Desert, with only about 20% humidity. That's why your skin may feel discomfort after a flight. Mm. But wouldn't it make more sense to install several humidifiers that could add some moisture? But this extra load would cost airlines lots of money. Plus, the plane's airframe is mostly made of aluminum and other metals, and humid air could lead to corrosion. So, don't forget to bring a moisturizer and use it during the flight. Always secure your tray table as soon as the plane starts moving on the tarmac, and never lower it during the takeoff and landing. It's a security measure, which ensures that you and the other passengers will have a clear pathway in case of an emergency evacuation. Also, keep your seat in an upright position during takeoff and landing. First of all, a reclined seat can seriously slow down an emergency evacuation, since it will block a person sitting behind. What's more, the more backward you're leaning, the harder it is to get into the brace position during an emergency landing. Now, try to avoid snoozing during or right after takeoff and landing. For one thing, it's not the best thing for your health. The main problem is that the air pressure inside the cabin changes very quickly during these phases of the flight. This, in turn, affects the air pressure in your ears. It's important to be alert during this time to relax and open up your ears. For example, by yawning or swallowing frequency. Chewing gum works for me. If you're sleeping, you can't do this, which can lead to permanent damage. And of course, there's a safety issue. Most accidents happen during takeoff and landing. If you're sleeping during these stages, you might not be alert and conscious enough if an emergency happens. Now, this next recommendation comes from the EPA, the Environmental Protection Agency. According to them, you might want to skip on hot drinks on a plane. The water used to make tea or coffee doesn't come from bottles, it's regular tap water. And water tanks on airplanes are often old and full of bacteria. In 2004, there was a study which found that more than 12% of water samples contained harmful bacteria. But if you still decide to have a cup of hot beverage on a plane, never pour coffee or tea on your own. Flight attendants are trained to handle this task in crowded aisles of a moving airplane and won't accidentally burn you or other passengers. Now, it's probably better if you don't order Coke on a plane. The cabin pressure so low up in the air causes a lot of foam. For apparent reasons, flight attendants don't want to serve you a cup filled with froth. That's why they'll fill only half the cup, then wait for the bubbles to settle, and then finish pouring. That can take ages. Keep your air vent open. This way, you'll minimize the spread of germs. Planes have high-quality air filters. They'll catch up to 99% of all airborne germs, so you should be safe there. But make sure to wipe that tray table. With 8 times more bacteria than the toilet flush button, it's the dirtiest place on board. Another thing you should avoid is leaning your head on the window if you have a window seat. You never know who occupied your seat before you, and in any case, the glass is likely to be covered with germs. Say no to backless sandals and high heels on a flight. I do. There are very serious safety reasons for such a request. The first is that both these types of footwear make it very difficult to evacuate the aircraft fast. If you wear high heels, you will anyway have to leave them behind in case the crew is using emergency slides during an evacuation. The heels are very likely to damage the slide, so off they go. Now ask yourself, do you really fancy running away from the airplane barefoot? I'll answer that for you, nope. Instead, wear sturdy shoes with a solid sole. In this case, you won't find yourself standing on the hot tarmac or in the weeds without any footwear at all. Don't stuff heavy objects into overhead compartments. Your things may not stay inside during severe turbulence, and while falling out, 
they will injure you and other passengers. Ow! That's why if it feels difficult to lift something into the overhead compartment, better put it under the seat in front of you or elsewhere. Now, don't blame the pilots for the hard landing. When you experience it in bad weather, it might be intentional. If the runway is covered with water or snow, the plane has to touch down hard in order to break the water layer and prevent aquaplaning. Otherwise, the water can perform the role of a lubricant, and the plane won't be able to break or respond to any control. Deploying an emergency slide when there's no emergency is a bad, very bad idea. It can cause hour-long delays and cost airlines thousands of dollars to pack the undamaged slide back into its container. Why would someone do it? Apparently, some think it'll help them get off the plane faster. Well, they're an idiot. Don't be one yourself. Just keep in mind that it doesn't work this way. Don't ignore the instructions of the cabin crew to open window shades during takeoff and landing. This way, flight attendants can see what's happening outside, assess the situation, and act fast, organizing the evacuation. For example, if there's a fire outside one exit, they will redirect passengers toward another door. Avoid carrying spray deodorants or shaving cream in your carry-on baggage. Both these things tend to explode mid-flight and therefore aren't allowed on board the airplane. A much better idea is to choose stick deodorants. You also mustn't keep power banks in your checked luggage. And if you want to bring one on board, its capacity shouldn't be more than 20,000 milliamps. Besides, you shouldn't use them during the flight since they might catch fire. In general, lithium batteries are safe to use. But since they're high energy, they can catch fire if they're not treated with care, misused, or if there's a manufacturing fault. Such batteries have been the cause of quite a few fires on board airplanes, as well as during ground handling. Do not worry about airport scanners. They won't harm your health. Otherwise, airport employees wouldn't be able to stay near them without special clothing. Even when you're passing by a baggage scanner, the risk is minimal. And the last one. Don't act like a jerk on board. Behave yourself. I know you will. Also, never try to land a plane on your own. Nah, don't laugh. I'm not kidding. In movies, they often show us that something happens to the pilots and they can't land the plane. And that's when the main character, a very skillful person, starts their game. Unfortunately, it's close to impossible to do it in real life. Even if a person is a genius, is fond of computer simulators that match the real model of an aircraft 100%, and is ready to follow all the instructions from the ground, they're likely to fail due to one simple aspect – stress. It is true that there have been cases throughout history when amateurs landed smallish private planes after the incapacitation of a pilot. However, there has never been a case of a non-professional pilot landing a commercial passenger airplane. It's only in the movies. Tires on the landing gear don't burst because they're designed for a load that's four to five times as great as they experience during landing. The wheel itself might break, but the tire won't burst. This little tip based on people's psychology can help you choose the fastest line at the airport. If there are several lines at check-in, opt for the left one. It's believed that you'll get to the counter more quickly this way. Most people are right-handed and intuitively choose the right side. Your skin usually becomes a bit dry during the flight. This happens because of low humidity levels in the cabin. Bring a good moisturizer with you to keep your skin hydrated on board. Do you know that airplane pilots always eat different meals before a flight? This way, if one of them gets food poisoning, the other will be able to take control of the plane. Airplane tray tables are some of the dirtiest surfaces in the cabin, so make sure to wash your hands frequently. And clean that table with an antibacterial wipe to get rid of all those bacteria living there. If you're sitting in an aisle seat, you can have more space to stretch your legs out. Just push the button on the underside of the outermost armrest. This will move the armrest up, giving you more space for your legs and preventing the armrest from jabbing into your side. Here's a reason why they turn the lights off in the cabin. Passengers need to get used to the darkness in case an emergency landing happens at night. This way, their eyes are already used to the absence of light, which makes it easier to evacuate. Flight attendants ask you to open window shades so they can see what's happening outside. This way, they can choose the best way to evacuate passengers in case of an emergency.
Almost all passenger planes are white, since this color best reflects the sun's rays and prevents the plane from heating up. Another good reason is that white paint is cheaper. Also, workers and engineers can easily notice any damage on a white surface. It's better to avoid making important decisions during a flight. Your brain doesn't get enough oxygen at such heights. This negatively affects its functioning. Chewing gum, hard candies, and mints can help you to avoid this annoying ear popping during takeoff and landing, but not because of the candy itself. You feel better thanks to the process of swallowing. Yawning helps too. As for the gum, it also helps get rid of that bad breath caused by the thin air at high altitudes, which pulls moisture right out of your body. Dry air can make you feel as if you're coming down with a cold. The air in the cabin dries out your nose and throat as if you have symptoms of a cold. These symptoms usually go away right after landing. The water they use to make coffee and tea on board isn't always clean enough. Yeah, many companies use very good water filters now. But still, it's better to ask for bottled water if you're thirsty. That tiny triangle on the aircraft wall over your seat means a lot for flight attendants. These triangles mark the windows through which you can see flashing indicators. Those signal the retraction of the landing gears and the closing of the flaps. Let's say the pilots find out there's some problem. In that case, a flight attendant rushes to the necessary window to check what's happening. But for passengers, this is just the best place for photos, since you can see the wings perfectly. Seats in the middle of the cabin above the wings are the best for you if you have motion sickness. This area is more balanced and shakes the least during turbulence. If you tend to get nervous during the flight, do some physical exercise not long before boarding the plane. A little workout helps lower your stress levels and makes your body release endorphins, the happiness hormones. Also, this physical activity compensates for the hours you spend sitting still. The turbines are located under the wings since this makes it cheaper, faster, and easier to service the engines. Previously, they used to be placed in the tail. It required expensive equipment and much more time to repair. When they started installing the engines below the wings, ticket prices went down. Imagine you're flying in a hot air balloon. See the burner system installed under the gas bag, also called the envelope? It heats the air inside, which makes the balloon go up. So, turbulence is the same hot air but created by nature. When the air heats up, it rises a plane. When it becomes cooler, the aircraft goes down. And passengers feel as if they're riding a roller coaster. A stream of hot air left by another plane can also cause turbulence. It's common for most flights, but usually, turbulence is so light that passengers don't feel it. Do you know that planes can fly even after one engine fails? Pilots can control such emergency situations and land the aircraft safely. Passengers may feel a slight tilt during the flight, but in most cases, they don't even know the plane is flying with only one engine. Your eyes get oxygen straight from the air. It's not delivered by the blood. So your eyes can feel somewhat dry during the flight. Put eye drops in your bag. They'll help you keep your eyes moist. It's forbidden to carry large volumes of liquids on board because some hazardous substances can easily dissolve in water. If a plane has to land on water, its wings become a life-saving pillow. Empty fuel tanks help the aircraft stay afloat too. By the way, it can be from 10 minutes to 60 hours before the plane sinks. It all depends on the model, weather conditions, and the pilot's skills. Those smiling flight attendants you meet when you get into the cabin usually hide their hands behind their backs. They're counting people entering the plane to make sure that all passengers are on board. Despite all the words people say about airplane food, it's not actually so bad. The problem is your sense of taste. It's not so acute since the air in the cabin makes your mouth dry. It also dulls your sense of smell. That's why airlines add a lot of spices and salt to their meals. Is it true that your hair grows faster during the flight? Not really. Scientists haven't managed to prove it. This myth appeared in the first part of the 20th century when some passengers noticed that their stubble had grown longer during the flight. It's normal for people to get headaches during the flight, especially right after takeoff. You climb to an altitude higher than Mount Everest within about 10 minutes. These changes happen too fast for your body to adjust. Seatbelts on planes stretch across your stomach to save you from getting slammed against the ceiling in case of turbulence. When it happens, the aircraft starts moving up and down. 
and your waist belt holds you securely. And seat belts in cars protect people from horizontal collisions. Airplanes have special protection from lightning. Even if it strikes, passengers won't feel it. Planes are covered with an aluminum coating that conducts electric current, but doesn't let it get inside the plane. Electronics and fuel tanks also have extra protection. Plane seats are so uncomfortable because airlines try to fit the maximum number of passengers on the plane. That's why there's so little space between seats. Two additional rows means 12 more passengers. Also, companies make airplane seats lighter to save on fuel costs. Even seemingly insignificant extra weight can cost an airline thousands of dollars. And by the way, your seat has a fire-resistant coating. It's necessary to prevent a fire from spreading in case of an accident. Airport workers transport unclaimed luggage to special centers. If the owner doesn't show up within three months, the baggage is put up for sale in specialized stores. You couldn't use your phone on an airplane in the past since cell phones were really dangerous for navigation. Their radio signals could disrupt the settings in aircraft electronics. Oxygen masks fall down not only during strong turbulence, but also when the air pressure inside the cabin changes dramatically. Passengers are okay if they put on their oxygen masks, but in such cases are considered to be an emergency. And pilots do their best to quickly go down to a safe altitude so that passengers can breathe without oxygen masks.